Okay. Now that we have our 2D properly aligned and its elevation properly set, let's go ahead and start with some basic modeling techniques. Now, when we set our reference toggle earlier, I told you we were going to come back in here and turn it off. Here's why. So with that toggle on, when you click on anything in this 2D reference, it, it highlights everything. We don't want that. We want to be able to select individual elements within that reference. So we're going to come back in here, turn it off. Now, when you select something in that reference, it selects the individual element. So let's start with this one. By being able to select individual elements, we can now come into our manipulate and copy. And we can copy that 2D element into the 3D space. This makes life a lot easier. If you've already set, set these at one to one, you know the sizes that it's going to take up on the floor space. Now all you have to do is using the solids modeling tool, well, solids by extrusion, you can grab that 2D element and pull it into 3D space. Now you'll notice as we're using AccuDraw we're in an XYZ mode so it's giving you changes in all three. If you hit the spacebar you will move to a vector a distance, an angle, and a Z or a Z offset which if you're snapping to something in the background it tells you what that Z offset is. In most cases we don't care. So I will hit enter and then it doesn't really care about that Z offset or it doesn't display a Z offset. So by using AccuDraw uh, we can hit a number and tell it a specific height. This can be in feet decimal feet or if you want to do feet in inches you can hit your feet hit your period key or colon or hit your period key twice or colon and then your inches now I happen to know this piece of equipment is typically 90 inches tall so I've hit period twice we're going to make it 90 inches tall but I messed up because I copied this out in a different spot than where we want it, want it to be. So let's delete that. I'm going to grab that same shape, copy it, I'm going to tentative to that corner, and tentative right back. Now it's going to copy it exactly into that position we want. It will stay highlighted, and we can now grab that extru extrusion tentative on that corner again so we know we are starting at the ground level and now we can pull it right up in position to 90 inches now there's a series of these guys in this room we're going to do that same thing but we're going to do it all at once so we've selected one and then by holding the control key we're going to select the other four in this room we're going to copy tentative to a corner tentative right back to escape to finish the copy command and now we can solid by extrusion starting at the base coming up to 90 inches. And now we have all of our extrusions for those pieces of equipment. And it's that simple. So some of these items are not 
on the floor. Some of these, such as this one here, this one here, we have a couple more here. These are panels that are mounted on the wall above the floor. So, right now we are set to switchboard, which is the level for these guys. But um, if we look, this is on a different one. So if you hold the Alt key and left click, it will go ahead and select that level. If the level does not exist in your drawing, this may not work. Good thing is, if we copy this into place by using the copy command, either by picking the button or using three and one in this case, three, one. We can copy this into our drawing and it will bring the level information with it. So let's move this. Okay, hitting enter to lock our axis back down into position and let's extrude this one as well. This time we're actually going to extrude down. The reason being this panel happens to be modeled with the top of it at five and a half feet above finished floor. So let's say it is a little 18 inch tall box. Okay, so we've extruded it down through the floor 18 inches, but we want to move it up. So I've selected a point here, and since we've modeled this with the top already at finished floor, we don't have to worry about where on this thing we pick because we know when we move up, it's going to put the top of that at our distance above the finished floor. Now you'll notice that if I come over here and hit enter, it allows me to move up, down, and sideways. If I come up here to view one, it doesn't allow me to do that. When you move through your various views in MicroStation, your ACS, your coordinate system doesn't always track very well. So if you end up in a view and it's not letting you move in the direction you want, get the V key. V is your view rotation. This sets the ACS, sets your coordinate system to that specific view. So we're in view three, we hit enter, we've got our ACS, that's letting us move up and down, we can see that. Now we can put in our distance. We want to move that panel up. So there's one panel. The great part of this is we can now use similar techniques and get the rest of these panels modeled. So this guy was on E electric device. This one is on E power panel. Then we hit Alt, left click get our appropriate level. This time we have to create the shape because this is a cell. It will not allow us to extrude a cell. It has to be a shape, a closed shape specifically. Now we could break this and go through the ha hassle of removing all that stuff. It's not worth it. So we will have to either create a 2D block and extrude it, or we can start with the slab command, and that will be the next video. We'll get into creating solids using a 2D background.